Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending. We appreciate you, your time, and your passion to serve the public and libraries. Children and pets are welcome at this presentation, but just a heads up. This program is going to be recorded and it's going to be archived on multiple platforms. So feel free to use the chat to give kudos or to share thoughts and bounce ideas off of each other. But we do ask that you please hold all questions to the end if possible. Next up, please, who are we? We are five librarians who found each other on a teen librarian Facebook group and have come together to present how each of us have reinvented showing movies in libraries. So first up, hi, I'm Sarah Pearson. I work as a youth services librarian at Minerva Public Library in Minerva, Ohio, which is a small village that's about a half hour from Canton, about a half hour to 45 minutes from Akron, about a half hour from almost anywhere that you would recognize. And I first learned about interactive movies when I started my position here about two and a half years ago. And I was told that, hey, guess what? We have one scheduled for this summer, go. And <laughs> I'm sure there were resources out there, but I certainly wasn't aware of how to locate them. And I know this is something that would have really helped me. So I'm gonna let my fellow hosts introduce themselves and then we will get going on the presentation. Hi, my name is Caitlin Clark and I am the children's and young adult librarian at the Oak Bluffs Public Library, which is on Martha's Vineyard. It's a small little island um, in Massachusetts. And I have a little bit of experience in interactive movies within the last couple of years in my position, um, but they're, my experience is a little bit different from, um, I think the traditional idea of interactive movies. So my part will kind of talk about the different settings that you can hold interactive movies in and some alternative ideas um, that are outside of the library building. Okay, and my name is Patricia Van Arsdale. I work at the Hussey Mayfield Memorial Public Library. We are in Zinesville, Indiana that uh, shares a borderline with Indianapolis. We are just on the um, northwest side of town. Um, and I have been doing interactive movies for almost seven years. And I can say, at least for me, movies were not popular in our community. So I was just trying to find a different way um, to get more people in to watch movies. And then over time, it evolved and ours are almost done and planned completely by our team council members. All right, I'm Deb Dwyer. Um, I work in um, Phoenix Public Library in Phoenix, Arizona. We're a fairly big location, but we operate in very small clusters. Um, so at my branch, we were looking at finding ways to do more family programming because we had kids programming. We had adult programming, we had teen programming, but we wanted family programming. So we started with the interactive movies in-house and then the, in the after times, um, we wanted to provide services to our customers that they weren't getting and it's hot here in Arizona. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the families were still bonding and participating together. So we moved to an on, um, a take home version of interactive movies. And Mary, are you up yet? No. Mary is here as well. Uh, the computer crashed. So she's coming back in, but she's uh, LA here and uh, she does tons and tons of work on these, these scripts and these movies and she's done every one of them with me. So that's us. All right, excellent. In which case I'm going to say, let's move on to the next slide and let Mary, you know, get stuff up and running without the pressure of waiting for us. So you may be wondering, especially if you saw this and you had went, I have no idea what interactive movies are, but I'm interested in learning more. If that is the case, you may be wondering, what are interactive movies? The simplest way that I can think of to describe them is that they are a family-friendly version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The Rocky Horror, Horror, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, for those of you who aren't, who aren't familiar with it, is a 1970s cult classic movie and it's become a tradition for audience members to yell lines back at the screen, to wear costumes, to limp sync, to dance along, et cetera, during pauses in dialogue, and so on. Our interactive movies do something very similar. Before the movie begins, we generally give audience members a script of prompts that tell them what to do when something happens on screen, and a bag of props that then help them interact with the film. So sometimes that means you eat a Hershey's kiss when two characters on screen kiss, 
This is a big favorite one. And other times it means responding to a particular line of on-screen dialogue with a short line of dialogue from the script, cheering for characters or any other number of actions. The idea is that we use the props and the scripts to help set the mood and bring the story to life. Next slide, please. All right, why use interactive movies? Why should you care about them? As librarians, most of us love stories and we love encouraging that love in other people. That's why we go into the profession often as not. Interactive movies really help patrons immerse themselves in stories. They lead to a deeper connection with the material and they can act as a brief group bonding experience that helps patrons form a positive mental association with the library. These programs are a great way to introduce classic movies and new genres to youth and they often work really well as intergenerational programming. As mentioned before, this is a really good family type program, but it's also a fun way to get people from different generations who aren't related in you know, non-COVID times or in some of the alternate forms, which we're gonna discuss later, to interact with each other. So you might be showing an old classic one, for instance, maybe, and then you can have people sharing stories about what they remember, et cetera, before you get the film going. Likewise, interactive movies are a great way to widen your reach in the community, and they provide you with lots of opportunities to partner with other local organizations. Beyond promoting DVD and Blu-ray checkouts of the movie, you can use interactive movies to promote books. All you really have to do is set up a display of titles related to the movie nearby, or if you're doing take-homes, hand out bookmarks. But it's mainly just a fun way to vary how you share movies. I'm going to pass this presentation on now. All right, so if you're gonna get started, one of the things that you have to think about is what are your options? So the two thing is how much money do you have and where are you gonna do it? Um, two years ago, most people were not doing take home kits, but certainly life has changed. And I think that with the convenience and popularity of kits, we all probably know that we will continue to do kits probably in a post-COVID world. Um, so the first thing to think about is budget. How much money do you have? Uh, sometimes you have zero dollars and interactive movies are super wonderful and fantastic because if you have no money, it is literally no problem. There are wonderful ways that you can still include people, have them um, interact or do things. So instead of maybe eating a Hershey kiss when two characters kiss on screen, maybe they can look at the screen and say, ew, and drag that out. And it just helps bring everybody together. And it's interactive movies, I will also say, is a great way to utilize leftover summer reading prizes and other things that you may be trying to get rid of. Um, and then the next part of that is where, uh, like I said previously, everything had been in-house, uh, but with kits, so many people and so many of us have adapted these to curbside kits and adjusted budgets. And it's really been wonderful and fantastic because we're really to able, able to introduce more people to this type of um this new movie experience. And so I have a feeling, at least where I work, this experience has been done um, just for teens, but I have a feeling that once the summer hits that we will be doing these for families and teens and probably young people. Um, so really great opportunities when it comes to budget and where there should be almost no limitations to what you can do with interactive movies. And if I can have the next slide, please. So just a couple of pictures here of what things look like in the library. We have a couple of different options here and every single one looks fun and fantastic and all kinds of different. So if you're doing it in the library, there is absolutely no wrong way to do it. So um, we have people sitting down in library chairs. We have people bringing their own chairs. We have bags that are ready. All of these are really fun and welcoming environments. So again, no wrong way to do an interactive movie. It just depends on what works best for you and, and your community. And just as we always say, when we go into anything, when it comes to programs, what works for me and my patrons and my community may not work for you and your patrons and your community. So it's a really great program because it's super easy to adapt. Uh, next slide. Oh, the take-home kits. 
Guys, these are super wonderful and fantastic. I just want to highlight the ladies in Arizona, uh, Deb and Mary, they're just done a super phenomenal job at kits. And if you take a look at this picture, they have all the kits ready to go. And even from a distance, we can see what every single one of them is. Um, I can see Matilda is on the left. And that's probably the only one that I easily recognize. Sorry, ladies. But um, in addition to having the kits ready to go when they were closed to um, uh, patrons who wanted to come in and browse, they made it easy on every single one of their staff who was doing curbside service to grab a kit and grab a movie along with it. They, they just did a super phenomenal job. And again, it's all visual, super wonderful. So um, I'm just going to repeat myself a little bit here and say take-home kits, they're great during the pandemic. They're also great during extreme weather. I will say where I live in Indiana, we generally do not have temperatures over 100 degrees, but certainly Deb and Mary out in Arizona, they get that probably fairly often. Or if you live in um, an area where there is extreme cold, again, it's a really great way to do um, a different type of movie, especially when you know that people are just going to stay inside anyway. Um, it's a great way, again, to host library programs at home. So we take all the goodness and all the super fun stuff that we do, and we take them um, and just offer them for people to do um, at home. Um, Again, it's great for families. We've done it just for teens. This is the first time our kits, um, actually this summer is the first time our kits will be made available to families and to take home. We are preparing 200 of each kit in a community that I believe we serve about 35,000 people. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and then it promotes family engagement. So often do you maybe not have an opportunity to have a program that will bring in and uh, attract people of all ages. And so this is a really wonderful way to involve absolutely everybody. I can say we're doing Interactive Princess Bride and I already have several staff members saying that is one of my favorite movies. You will have to let me know when a kit becomes available. So really super fun to bring all ages and everybody together. And I'm going to pass this along to the next person. All right, that's me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about using movie theaters and films, uh, film centers to host your interactive movie. So this is another option to host interactive movies. If you, you know, want something else that is just outside of the library, if you want to collaborate, especially. So in November 2019, the six local public libraries on Martha's Vineyard collaborated to host an interactive movie showing of the Polar Express. And we did this at our local film center theater. Um, the event was first come first serve to give you a little bit of, you know, an, an idea about how we organized it. Um, and there was a line that went down and around the building. It was so popular. Uh, the theater was nearly full. It had about a couple couple of spots left. It had about 176 seat, seats in the theater itself. So to give you an idea about the logistics of this, we staffed about five or six librarians for the program. And then we also had a couple of adult volunteers. Some were parents and caregivers. Some were teachers in the community that heard about the event and asked if they, if we needed any help. So we had, you know, about one person from each library and then, you know, some people from the community. It was a great way to collaborate. Inside the theater, we used a megaphone to project one person's voice to instruct all of the attendees on the script's actions. So other, while that was happening, other librarians were stationed throughout the theater and in the lobby to assist attendees. So that could be, you know, pointing them in the direction of the restroom or if they needed drinks or snacks, which the, they could purchase from the theater itself. And the libraries were responsible for organizing the interactive movie bags that were passed out to participants. Uh, we were in, uh, responsible for purchasing the license and advertising the event. But since the Film Center is a nonprofit organization, I know not all of them are, but the one that we worked with is a nonprofit. So they did not charge us to use the space. And they actually booked a time for us that was kind of set up in the late morning so that the film was shown in the early afternoon. So they weren't even showing anything at that time anyway. So it was kind of a win-win because we needed a space. And since they weren't showing anything, it got people to um, come to the theater itself. So it got people there. 
And so this is just another great way to team up with other librarians and to partner with some local organizations and offer a community program. So what I wanna do is share this movie uh, this is the last, it's about a minute, maybe 45 seconds of towards the end of the Polar Express. And I want to show you one of the actions that we did. Um, so you have to wait for it towards the end. Oh, and it's not playing the video. All right. So I can't show that right now. Technical difficulties. Uh, it was working during our um, our practice. That's a bummer. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next slide in that case. I'm hoping I have one more video for you down here that I'm hoping will play. So I want to talk a little bit about also doing drive-in events. So the one that I just talked about was hosting interactive movies indoors at a movie theater or a film center. And now I want to talk a little bit about hosting drive-in movies. So another option is to host an outdoor event like this. Uh, during the fall 2020, when movie theaters were still closed, all of the Martha's Vineyard libraries decided to team up with a local film organization that had been showing drive-in movies all summer. So our libraries planned the interactive movie program part, and then we all partnered up with this local film organization to host the movie as a drive-in. Um, and to give you an idea, the drive-in was set up behind our local ice arena in a dirt parking lot. It wasn't something that is already kind of established in our community. This local film organization, um, the Martha's Vineyard Film Festival, kind of saw this as an opportunity. They saw, you know, COVID last summer, we were really trying to find ways to kind of bring the community together. So they kind of made all of this happen. Um, and so because they already had this experience going all summer, by the time we approached them in October, they had all the equipment, they had everything all set up. This program allowed the libraries to collaborate on the interactive movie portion of it, while the film organization organized the equipment, the ticket registration, which was technically free, but we wanted to kind of keep track of how many people were going to show up. Um, and they set everything up. So it was a really easy way to kind of divide up, you know, all the tasks that were involved with a program this size. Another great thing about hosting drive-in movies is that it's a safe, socially distanced program. So especially during COVID right now, if you're still looking for ways to offer, you know, programs like this, or you want to do interactive movies, it's, it's great for, you know, COVID times, but it's also something that you could just do after COVID, you know, looking ahead, you know, at the future, um, you know, when we're able to, even if we are doing in-person programming or in your community, this is something that's so cool that families love. We got so many families who attended this drive-in event and, they hadn't really attended anything like this before. So it's a really great way, it's something to do right now and also to continue in the future. On Hall we offered this on Halloween night and the film organization set up this green screen that you can kind of see the two pictures on the, on the right side there at the front of the parking lot. So one at a time, children could come up to the green screen area as seen in the photos and pose or do a little dance in their costume. So this was our way to kind of on Halloween night when everything was still kind of shut down in our community to have them dress up and show off their costumes in doing it in a socially distanced way. Because the film org organization is also a nonprofit, the libraries only had to split the cost of the license of the movie and the cost of the items inside the interactive movie bags that we handed out as cars pulled up. So the film organ organization did not require any payment to use their equipment and the ice arena did not charge us to use the back of their parking lot. So just some things to kind of keep in mind while an event this large sounds like a huge undertaking, if you are, can, you know, team up with the right organizations and kind of, you know, if you have a budget, see what you can do. Nonprofits are great to work with. Um, and even if there aren't really a lot of film organizations that are nonprofits in your area, maybe the local movie theater will just kind of let you use their space. So it's always worth asking. Um, and I hope that you get some ideas off of these. And Caitlin, I will say we did do have a question um, asking how you managed sound? That's a great question. So the film organization, they use an FM transmitter. Um, I, I don't quite understand the equipment behind that, but I can get that information. They handled all of that. So they had speakers that were set up, you know, that kind of projected so that if you got out of your car, you could hear the movie. Um, but then also each car had its own, it almost looked like a walkie talkie. And so you got sound coming from that. So you could hear it from just the loud, like the big speakers they had, just regular speakers. And then each car had its own so that, you know, the people in the car, you got, you know, the sound from that as well. Um, and then I just want to show you the video here, which cross your fingers that it works. 
unable to play video. All right. We tried, but it's basically, you can see these pictures here. Um, you can hear the sound in the videos. When I upload this, uh, the recording, I'll make sure to include those videos that are in this uh, presentation. All right, my turn. So we've talked about the why, we've talked about some of the big picture and the grand ideas that we can bring people together and we can do all these things. So I'm gonna tell you and talk to you about the details, the how, the what do you think about the, what do you plan, that kind of stuff. So we'll start on that. You can click me. All right, so the easiest thing you can do is pick a pre-made interactive movie script. Um, it's actually where I started from. Um, Sarah, I found your list somewhere on the internet and she's probably got a- Facebook. Huh? Is it, I'm guessing probably one of the Facebook librarian groups. No, it was way before that. So oh, I like okay. randomly found it and I like, this is cool. I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I started with the Hocus Pocus uh, script and like, we can do this. This is totally usable. So um, we started with the script that was already there. And then as I got comfortable with it over the, you know, couple of times we've done it, we make our own now, which we'll talk about in a second. But so what you want to think about is what movie do you want? Do you want to do kids? Do you want to do adults? Do you want to do teens? What, what audience do you want? Um, we've organized the list in categories. So we have action adventure, we have animated, we have throwbacks, we have musicals, we have um, uh, there's a holiday section. So if you wanted to do those Halloween movies or the Christmas movies, um, there's all these different categories. So if you know your audience, you can go check the movie genres to find an already created list. Um, if you're showing in-house or, or someplace else, know your licensing options. Um, I want to do Princess Bride in-house so bad, but our licensing does not do that. So one of the first scripts I wrote for Take Home was Princess Bride, because I don't have to do licensing for that. So know your licensing. We um, make sure that we have copies. Um, I don't want to stream a video if possible in building. I'd rather do a DVD because I know I can control that because our Wi-Fi is sometimes spotty. Um, I want to have copies of the disc available if I'm doing it in-house. And if I'm going to have it for home checkout, I want to be able to offer it to people so that they can watch it if they don't own it. Um, it's great for checkouts. Um, so we have that great pre-made um, script list. Uh, people have been adding to it. We've been adding to it. It was It's a great first start. You should always add yourself to the list. Um, it's one of the best things about working in libraries, um, I came from teaching. And when I was a teacher, everybody's like, well, if you want that, I can sell it to you on Teacher Pays Teachers. But in libraries, we share and we give each other stuff and we help each other out. So like, add yourself to the list, add your, add your ideas to the list and um, see if there's already a list. Also, um, when I want to do a new movie, but it's not on the list, I Google and see if somebody out there has done it before. And then I cold call them. Technically, I don't call anybody. I email them. Um, Mary knows I don't call anybody, but I, I have maybe some of you guys, I have randomly emailed them and said, hey, I saw you did this three years ago. Do you still have this script? And it gives me a, a starting off point. Um, so there's lots of places and lots of people um, that you can contact um, and see if there's already a made script. Once you get one, you need to read it. I've seen some that they don't get the characters' names right. So, you know, you still need to read through it and you need to modify it for your audience and your space, whether that's your building or your large gathering or it's the bag that gets sent home. Some of those things just don't work. So you gotta modify it out because you know your audience and your community best. And then you figure out your props, you organize, you do your details. You need to familiarize yourself with that movie as well. Um, you need to know um, what's happening in the movie um, in the order. And even if you've seen the movie a million times, you'd be surprised that you go, oh, that comes before this. I always thought it was after this. So a good idea is to do a wa watch through at least once, even with stuff you've seen a million times. Um, and know the characters' names, know the, the different things, um, know where maybe some of the issues and problems are going to be in 
the 1980s, um, I call it 80s PG. Apparently there was no PG-13 in the 1980s. So a lot of things were labeled PG that have PG-13 nowadays material in it. Um, I noticed when we watched Goonies in-house, I was, I mean, I know Goonies, but like I was uh, shocked at how much um, material was in there. And if I had just watched it for that concept, I would have um, maybe been a little bit more I told everybody it was 80s PG. They knew what they're getting into is Goonies. But um, it's nice to know those things ahead of time. All right, so um, you want to show them our pre-made list uh, place? Yes, definitely. All right, yes. so let me. All right, and I also posted it um, in chat. So I'm going to uh, share a new screen with you. So hopefully you can now see um, my, my Google screen. So this is. Um, a curated list by Sarah Pearson. Uh, it's a list of interactive movie experience scripts. So if I'm just going to scroll down, um, you can see there are movies by title. Um, look at all of these different titles with links. You know, if you want to say Inside Out, and this will bring you to the link that has the script for Inside Out. I actually there's just... Over, yeah, there's over 135 created lists or uh, scripts on there currently. And I'm sure that will be adding a few more in the next couple of weeks. You can also do it by category too. Like this, this list is great. It's, it's, I just used it last week, actually. Uh, I just saw Jumanji. Um, I was trying to think of animal movies for summer reading this summer um, and Jumanji came to mind. And I was like, I wonder if that's on Sarah's list. And of course it is. So like, there we go. You know, a lot of the planning is, is done. And there's an, a, there's um, an animated section. There's a holiday section at the bottom. If you're looking for holiday specific things, um, and like, it's all organized and ready to go. Um, just modify them out to fit your needs. I'm going to swap back to the librarian sharing. All right. So the next thing you can slide me to the next page, um, is you can make your own scripts. Um, and like, as soon as you feel comfortable, or even if you're like, I don't like any of these things, I want to do my own thing. Um, make your own scripts you know your audience you know your community um and you know the movies you love i wanted to do princess bride i did princess bride um i also made the goonie script because i live in the 80s um so when you um know your audience um and this is where you can um get your uh staff and your teen council involved because they know what's popular in your neighborhood as well they know what's popular with the teens they know what's popular with their siblings they know what's popular with their own families so and if you're going to have them help you you want to pick things that they're interested in watching especially if they have to watch it a time or two because you have to watch it to make your script so you're going to pick things that they think are cool because because I don't know about you, but I ain't cool anymore. Actually, I've, I never was. But anyways, so um, uh, this is where you can get lots of people involved. You got to take, um, you got to watch the movie at least once, and then you take notes throughout it. And we all take notes differently. Um, uh, Patricia has her teen council write out the notes and put the timestamp in there. I just list everything I think is important, the big events, running gags, repeated lines, things I think are funny um, and things that come up to me um, as they happen. Mary, uh, when she makes hers, she just types it actually into the script and then cleans up her script later. Um, I don't think that way. Um, so there's lots of ways to take notes. Um, and then you take all that information and you decide what works. Um, the, you want to make sure your actions and activities aren't too close together, but not too far apart. So you're like, um, with my list of that one picture where it's all highlighted, those are all my notes. And I highlight the things that I've decided to do. And just by looking at it, I can tell when things are too close or too far apart. Like there's a whole chunk of stuff that's not been highlighted. I know that I need probably something to fill into that area if possible. Um, cause you don't want too much downtime cause then people get bored and then they're done with it and they're like well this is too much trouble or um if there's too much together all at once there it's too frenetic um our one of the first scripts i did um was uh cloudy with a chance of meatballs which has a ton of things to do only literally we didn't stop the whole time and it got to be way too much so um when we actually did it in house i think i cut half of my stuff it was some really good stuff but we just couldn't do it all 
Um, and then um, make sure you in in person times plan if you're going to do in person plan a toilet breaks, bathroom breaks. Um, if you do, uh, you need to make something or, or, or create something or pass out things, you know, notate when that would be a good time in your movie script. And one of the best things, one of the things you need to do the most is have someone proofread it for you. Um, you need to know the characters' names. And, and like, sometimes you don't know what their actual name is. It was like that dude's dad. And I think he had a name. Well, that's where IMDB comes in. I use IMDB every time I make a script, even when I know the script, because the names are spelled funny sometimes. Like, like did, is Wesley spelled with the E or not the E? And, you know, Princess Buttercup, is it two words or one? Go check it. So IMDB. Um, is a great place to double check those things. You need to check your typos and misspellings. Happens every time. And then one of the things that Mary and I find over and over when we proofread each other's scripts, we put a prop listed, but never do an action for it. Or we do the action, but never list the prop, like in our list of things that you need to, that we're providing. So if, if you're going to just double check that all your things are included and watch uh, um, in there. All right, I talked fast. <laughs> we can slip to the next one. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I'm back. I'm here. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to set up and run through a live program in-house, um, specifically if you are holding it in your library branch. Um, so you want to start by setting up your space that also includes reserving your space. If you are doing it within your library, you might have a meeting room or some sort of community space that you need. Make sure you have that reserved for you so no one else sneaks in and gets it instead. Um, and you want to set that space up with any equipment you may need, with any seating you need. You might want to put up barriers so people aren't getting into your equipment, things like that. You also want to, well in advance, assign some staff to help you with the program. This is something you could technically probably do on your own, but it's easier if you have help, if you have people to help you set up and tear down, hand out kits, run the program, be examples, dance in front of everybody so that the crowd will dance. Um, and you need somebody who's kind of assigned to take over if you for some reason cannot be there. Um, so that is super, super important when you're starting to plan a live program. On the day of the program, when you get started, you want to have someone handing out your props and your activities as people enter. This is a good time to check for allergies, which we'll get into in a bit when we talk about props. Um, before you start the movie, you want to introduce the film, introduce your program, talk a little bit about it. And that's also a really good place to talk about your expectations. So you can see on this slide, there's also a bit of a script for how to kind of introduce your movie. We also, on our mega list of scripts, have a standard list of expectations, things like, you know, keep your hands to yourself, make sure you don't stand up in front of everybody so we can all enjoy the movie, don't throw things, whatever your expectations are for the movie. Make sure you set those up at the beginning of the movie so that if there is an issue later on, you know that you did your due diligence. Um, and then um, you want to explain the props and your gags and all the things that you're going to be doing throughout the movie. You can show the props. You can give examples of how you're going to use the props. If you're doing a dance or running in place or some sort of move, you can um, give examples of those and demonstrate them for your audience. Kind of get them pepped up so that they're ready to play along. Um, during the program, you want to encourage active participation. You and any staff you have in that audience must be participating. You cannot be an observer. This is your program. You better own it. Um, and then your staff will also be helping to monitor expectations and behavior, make sure no one is beating their brother with the prop you gave them, no one is screaming, things like that, just so everyone can enjoy the movie. Um, and then when you're done with the program, that's a great time to ask everyone to help you clean up. Um, but also you want to promote your upcoming programs. We would do one of these once a month. So during the program is a great time to remind people there's another one next month, come again. And this is also the time where you should be getting your evaluations if that's something that your library does. Make sure you collect them as people are leaving. Um, if you are doing kits instead of in person, this kind of stuff is all kind of implied. It's up to the parents to impose their own rules. So you can include a list of expectations if you want to with your kits, but it's not really necessary. That's up to the parents at that point. But this is kind of a good guideline to follow if you are doing in person. Um, go to the next slide. And now we're going to talk about props. Props are one of the most important and fun aspects of interactive movies. They're super important, 
but it's also really important that you pick the right props for your program. Um, so the first thing you want to consider is the age and demographic of your participants. Most of our in-house movies are set to attract people with families. So if you've got little kids coming in the building, you want to make sure you're not giving things that are choking hazards. You're not giving things that are going to be used as weapons or projectiles unless that's the intended use of them. Um, so you just want to keep in mind all of those things when you're planning what kind of props you want to use. You're also going to need a big determiner is going to be your budget. Um, if you have a large budget, you might be able to purchase all of your props. If you have no budget or you have a very small budget, you might want to make or repurpose your props. Um, for our at-home kits, we send a lot of printable activities because it's a great budget saver, um, but you might also use things like streamers or bubble wrap that are pretty cheap, or you might be able to go purchase things like snacks and toys and things like that, depending on your budget. So that's going to be a big, big thing that determines what you can provide. Um, you want to consider noise as a possibility, especially if you're doing in-person and especially if you're doing in-person in your branch. If you're doing an outdoor program, you might let kids scream all they want and blow noisemakers all they want. But if you've got a reading group of room over, you do not want to include those. We made that mistake. Don't do it. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. Um, allergies are another huge one if you are doing any kind of food um, or if you're using materials like latex in your program. Um, balloons probably are a no-no in person. We've done them in kits with a warning. Um, if you're going to have snacks, have alternative snacks for kids who have allergies because you want them to be included. So have gluten-free cookies, have M&Ms instead of Reese's Pieces when you do ET. You want them to be able to participate even if they can't use the same exact snack as everybody else. You don't want to exclude anybody. Um, mess is a really, really, really big one you have to consider. Again, if you want to be mean, you can send things that are a little messy home in kits and <laughs> like glitter and leave it up to the parents to determine whether or not they want to use that prop. But if you're doing it in person, be aware that anything messy is going to be your job to clean up or your custodial staff, and they might not like you anymore. So chips, confetti, glitter, paper balls, anything that's going to make a mess, think really hard if that's something you want to include. Um, if you're doing at-home kits, what we've done a lot is told people to um, grab self what we call self-supplied kit uh, props. So if there are common household items you can put in the script, things like grab your blanket, grab your favorite stuffed animal, grab a flashlight. You don't have to include everything. And if they're common household items, they should have no problem including them in the kit for themselves. And that also will cut down on your budget a little bit. Um, and we also have found that it's really nice to kind of have a go-to list of props that we will use for a lot of stuff so that we can have a nice supply on hand to slate into any kind of movie we're doing. Um, we really like glow sticks, bubble wrap, kids love bubble wrap, and it's not too noisy, but it's still kind of fun because it makes a noise. Um, streamers are great and silent, uh, bubbles, flashlights, things like that, that you can always have uh, on hand, ball pit balls. And also if you're in person, you can get stuff that's reusable from program to program. You can bust out your box of flashlights every program. You can bust out your ball pit balls every program. So it's nice to have stuff that you can rely on prop wise. Um, so those are all just some things to consider when you're planning your props. And we can go to the next slide. And then um, advertising. When you are planning a, either an in-person program or you are trying to get the word out about your kits, you want to make sure you're utilizing any tool that you have to advertise this program. Um, your website and social media are big ones. If you have access to these for your library, use them. If you don't, contact whoever does. And make sure they're advertising you on your website and on your social media and have a hashtag. That has been a way that we've had people able to um, talk to us is by posting on our social medias, interacting with us, hashtag your program so that you can get um, feedback from your patrons. Obviously you need to have flyers and displays in house. This is an adorable display. I think this is, is this Sarah? Is this yours, the cousin it? Yes, that is. Yes, to, to um, advertise uh, Adam's family. In-house displays are a great way to promote your upcoming programs. Um, so our cross promotions, if, especially if you're doing it with another organization or another community um, organization, have them advertise for you, advertise at other events. We used to advertise at our local farmer's market, advertise everywhere, everywhere you can. And then of course, patron word of mouth. Again, that's why a hashtag is so important. If your patrons are enjoying the program, they will bring people to enjoy it too. They will tell the people about it, encourage that word of mouth. All right, next slide. Next one, Deb. All right, so 
things to think about. This is, we've talked about all this, but we'll um, hit them all again real quick. Um, need to know your movie licensing options, especially if you're doing it in-house or at a big event, take homes don't have that same issue. Know your movie licensing. Somebody is asking what other groups are there besides Swank. We use some, I think, Universal. I, I We use a different one. I'll look it up. Um, besides Swank, but Swank is one of the popular ones. Um, know your age group and activities. I saw a lot of libraries online that were doing just straight adult um, movies, and they, it was much more um, like how you would run a Rocky Horror Picture Show event, and there's no reason why you can't do these for just adults. Um, somebody did Little uh, Shop of Horrors for straight adults, and it was a great, fun script, and uh, so but if you have kids, if you have families, know what age and activities. There's a lot of activities that adults will not do. And if you're aiming for an older crowd, they are not going to stand up and dance for the most part. They're not going to throw their arms in the air or, or pretend to ride a bicycle. But they'll do other things like throw streamers at each other. So know your age group and know what activities are going to work for each one. Um, collaborate. You know, have your teen council do things, have other staff members do things, um, work with your your film festivals, work with other libraries in, in the area, um, call the school and see if they'll do it with you. There's so many places and people to do this with that, you know, you don't have to be doing this alone and you don't have to worry about that because there's so many other things. Um, figure out if it's in person or take home. One of the great things about us switching over to take home is we have reached way more people with this programming option than we did with in-house. We are getting 8,500 people to our event, which is amazing. One of our biggest events in-house, but now we're getting so many more and when we do switch back to in-person, I don't think I'm going to have to explain what is an interactive movie nearly as much, if at all, because they'll I have a built-in audience coming back to in-person because we did the take-home. Um, and then our, our in-person people switched over to the take-home movies so well. Um, know in your, your advertising to spe specify um, supplies limited, first come, first serve, registration only. When we did our in-house um, ones, we don't do registration here, but I would have a, a projected number that I thought would come. So I'd make that many kits. And after those are up, you know, you can still come in and participate. You just don't get all the supplies. Um, so people know that if you come late, you might not get it all or uh, that our kits are going to run out or however it is, but make sure that people know that ahead of time so that their expectations are well. Uh, know your staffing options. You should always have people that know what's going on so that if you get sick or something happens, they can step in. They know the movie, they know the scripts, that they know how interactive movies work. Have people backing you up, working with you. Know your setup and location and equipment. Double check your speakers. We um, thought the first time around that um, one set of speakers was going to work in our big um, meeting room, and it wasn't great. So then we used two sets of speakers, and it was pretty decent. And then we got money, and we got a surround sound system, and it's amazing. But we had to really work on what our our speaker system was. We had to work on where are we gonna put people? What are we gonna do? And, and know what it looked like ahead of time. Um, I think that's good for me. Yeah, next slide. Okay, evaluations, guys, these are so important. I've learned more about what I need to do for interactive movies for my evaluations than I have any other program. And every year it just gets more and more popular. Uh, make it simple. The more questions you ask, it seems the less pertinent the information you're going to get back. Ask yourself truly, what are you measuring? What is it you need to know? This is one of my evaluations and it was the big questions on there were what was your favorite part of this program and, and why? What did you like least and why? The kids used to always say that the part that they like least was that they had to go home. So I had to figure out, well, why exactly do they, are they sad because they have to go home? Were they just having so much fun or were they not done with something? So ask very specific questions um, and figure out what you need to know and, and go from there. Um, and then the other thing, when you get these uh, evaluations back, listen to them, adjust. 
This was how I learned. I had lots of kids who needed to go to the bathroom, but did not because they did not want to miss anything. And I'm like, you know what? It hadn't occurred to me that during an hour and a half movie that I needed to have a bathroom break. Um, I will point out one thing really fast. I used to have a one through five program rating and I used to get a lot of threes and fours. And when I switched to the smiley faces, I essentially got a lot more fives. So the smiley faces, I highly recommend that over a one through five rating. So uh, yeah, listen and adjust. We learn such valuable stuff from our evaluations. Okay, so we are all going to put on our thinking caps and we're going to discuss really briefly um, sort of some brainstorming on how you can create your own interactive movie script. So for our example, we are going to go with The Lion King. I want you guys to all think about what are some of like the big moments that would make for really good interactive movie moments where, you know, maybe people are saying things, throwing things, eating things, et cetera. So maybe one example would be um, when, oh gosh, what are their names? Puma and Tim something. Timon. Timon. See, there you go. It's been too long since I've seen the movie. Come out with like the hula skirt and the coconuts or something. That is one of those moments where you go, oh yeah, that would be a good one for something. So maybe you give everyone like paper lays to stick on at that point in time. Um, oh yeah, I see when um, trying grubs for the first time. Yeah, that would be a good one to for gummy worms, yep. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Someone's got the um, line. So exactly, so you might say, okay, either when this general thing happens, you're going to um, put on your paper lay, or you might make it this very specific line and say, okay, that's when you all put on your paper lays. So what are some other things that we might do? Um, someone mentioned Mufasa dying. That's definitely an iconic moment. What could we add there as an action? Hmm. Mm, it's, it's, oh, tissues. Oh, I like that idea. Tissues. That's a good one. That's a good one. Bob, or don't pretend. <laughs> we, we, we don't usually do like pretend dying, but um, I love when people pass out because we always put it in that, you know, fake pretend to pass out. I, I don't like fake dying, though. I, I usually avoid that one. But if tissues you're are home, good. If you're at home, you could do like a, a, you know, fall back on the couch or fall sideways on the, you know, something like that. Left Animal Simba is great. I approve. Yes. Nope. I, I, I love that. Um, everyone's singing along, everyone lifting up the stuffed animal, present it to the rest of the room. <laughs> we could probably make um, surround sound stampede by beating our hands on our laps. Things that involve all of the senses, essentially, is what we want to have going. Oh, yep. Dancing with Simba and Nala. Um, actually, that makes me think of, can you feel the love tonight? Maybe, you know, when that, we say, okay, when that song begins, all of you go, ew. Or, or cover your mm, eyes. All of you go, Mwah! or something like that. Because it's good to mix up um, stuff that involves physical props and then the stuff that doesn't, which is going to be cheaper. So, you know, alternating them. <laughs> I think we've had some good ideas. Oh, 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 you know when, sorry. So, you know when the, sorry, I got excited. Um, oh, no, I get it. You know the, uh, the, um, the hyenas, they, they say, Mufasa. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good one. And they're like, do it again, do it again, Mufasa. Yeah. No, sorry. Mm. That, no, I think that one would go really well. And of course, part of the reason why we mentioned the Lion King is we're all thinking, at least most of us um, in the United States, in our area, my area anyways, are using, um, the summer library program's um, Tales and Tales theme. So animal movies, animal movies, animal movies. And with that, do any of you have any questions? I am going to, as I mentioned, um, stick that link down here again, just in case any of you missed it or just in case you don't wanna have to scroll back up to the top. But one sec. I will add, uh, Deb was so excited about the, the Mufasa line, like, yeah. it never gets old. This is like my favorite thing to do. This is something that I was not willing to give up. And I'm like, I claim interactive movies. Nobody else can do them. Um, and a, a lot of times, like, I, I will just giggle. And my coworkers are like, you're working on interactive movies, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, I am. Right. So after seven years, it, it does not get old. It is 
I love yeah I love putting like little jokes in my own scripts uh, so like um I I always put in the like whenever possible that you have to duck di- dodge duck and d- what's that one from um I don't know dodgeball <laughs> It's from, it's from when they were doing the dodgeball thing. And so like whenever anybody has to duck or dodge, I always use that quote from that movie, even though it's not related to the movie I'm using it on. Cause I think I'm hilarious. Um, I do, I do a lot of, I think I'm hilarious jokes in my own scripts. Um, I've got a question from the chat here. How often do most of you hold interactive movies or how often do you offer kits? Does anyone want to speak to that? Um, we do it um, for the kits monthly. Um, and we just, we keep the, when in the month we do it consistent. So people know when the, um, new ones are going to be coming out. So we'll have people checking in to see what the new ones are. Um, we currently have a list up that, um, oh, we've got another good question, but yeah, we currently have like a poster up that says, okay, this month we're doing this, that month we're doing that, et cetera. As far we, as, yeah, sorry. oh, go ahead. So you, we were doing one a month in-house before and then we switched over to the kits what we decided here um works best for us is we provide f- the four categories of movies we have provide a action adventure a musical an animated and a a throwback which is where i throw in all the 80s movies that i enjoy um and occasionally a holiday movie and so maybe five but we offer four at a time we make 10 kits because we have zero budget we, we have zero budget. We have done a lot with zero budget. And we figured we could make 10. We can make 10 of whatever we're going to do. We can do that. And so we make 10. When we're out of those 10, we make a new anim, uh, animated kit. We make a new action adventure kit. We make a new one. And we just keep always providing um, kits for our, our, our families. Um, we keeps us busy. Uh, we, were, uh, we were curbside for over a year. We, we didn't have a lot to do in the building, so we had the time to make a bunch of things, which helped us as well, because we could we felt productive, and we felt like we we're offering something. So we, we always provided four different titles. There was the 10, and it, by offering only 10, they had to come back and see what the next one was um, fairly fast, um, or then they'd be like, oh, I've already got it, um, if it's hung around for forever. Um, so... We, we, we feel like we would be a little bit extra, but, but that's kind of how we roll. So if you look at the list online, there's a lot that Mary and I have done because this year, that's what we did. We spent the majority of our time making movie kits and um, we've given out, I think over 600 kits this year um, to our customers. So. Yeah, no, those ladies have been an absolute powerhouse as far as putting things out. Um, Just. It's incredible. Um, we normally just do the one movie each month. Um, and we have been doing 20 kits because we've been doing just the family ones, but that keeps us plenty busy enough. So I'm just always in awe of the sheer amount of movie scripts that you guys are able to put together. So we did have a question asking, um, do you just include a paper copy of the script um, to the attendees and they follow along? Or do you announce what to do at that time? So in the take-home kits, of course, you know, it just says, okay, when this happens, you do that on the script. For in-person, we actually discovered when we first met and started talking that we all do this slightly differently, but we do all generally announce at that time, okay, this and such is happening now. Um, Some of us will pause the movie and say, okay, everyone, you know, get your this and such ready, and now we're going to do whatever that thing is. Others of us will, while the movie is still playing, say, all right, you know, your next action is coming up. Everyone get this in your hands and okay, go. And then, you know, lead and everyone will follow along. You can really do it pretty much any way you want as long as you are being clear enough that the audience understand. Someone did ask about, um, let's see. There's a couple questions that are kind of the one about do you usually pick movies and that are available to borrow at the library? And there's a follow-up question from someone else about uh, what do you do if you only have one copy of the movie? And then there was, I think, also someone asking just about um, money for supplies in general. So we don't create kits if we don't think our customers can watch the movie. There's no point in that. Um, 
we have found in this particular neighborhood that there's a lot of people with Disney Plus. So like they never check out our Disney movies or or maybe they all just already own the Disney movies, but everything else they seem to not own. So they want to borrow our movies. So we pick movies we own. We have a list of our favorite movies and we ask, we, we there's some things that we can't do. Spy Kids apparently is not in our system and may be out of print. And we wanted to do Spy Kids because we had a spy thing coming up. And like, so we're not doing it. There's a few things that we're like, oh my God, that would be perfect. And we can't do it because if we can't watch it here, how can our customers watch it at home? You know, um, we usually include on the script that take home that what places that are um, streaming it, um, but not everybody has streaming things. So like we should be offering it. Um, where do you get the money? We don't have money. Other people have money. We used to have a friend's budget. That was our programming budget that when I did in-house, we would use our programming budget to do our in-house programming. Um, with the pandemic, there was issues with all of our funding. So we, we ended up with no budget, which means that we use a lot of paper printables and donated things and random stuff that we have had in this building for forever um, or, or leftovers from other kits that when we were in-house, because I bought enough to do 100 people and only 60 showed up. So I figured out another way to repurpose that. And we've used a lot of old summer reading um, tchotchkes, a lot of old summer reading tchotchkes. There's ducks and and bendy men and, and slap bracelets and like, I'll figure out a way to use that. Um, people know now that um, I will take anything they give me. They're like, I have, I'm cleaning out my closet and I have a whole bunch of, I'll take it. I'll figure it out. Um, it's, it might be weird, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> and then I just want to add one more thing to, uh, to backtrack for just a second about uh, where do you get copies of the movies? So what we do at our library, because we are in a consortium with 30 something other libraries, we you know, we did, uh, we did Hocus Pocus that I mentioned in October. We also offered, in addition to that drive-in movie that I uh, talked about earlier, we offered them at curbside at all of the island libraries on Martha's Vineyard. So if families weren't able to make it to the drive-in movie, they could take the kit home and just do it from their own home. Um, which meant that each library needed to have plenty of copies. So we had to make sure that I think each library had at least one or two copies there. And then the system had, you know, I mean, dozens of copies of the movie so what you can do is if you're in a consortium just request those movies similar to a book club I've seen a lot of libraries do this where if you are offering a book club you'll order multiple copies and maybe you have them behind the circulation desk or some you know some common area and when your patrons walk up you have kind of that stack of books to kind of choose from you could do the same thing with interactive movies and request those movies and kind of have them on hand when patrons say hey I'd love to take this kit home you know do you have extra copies here um, have any of us ever tried the Netflix party? I know I have not. So I'm pretty sure with Netflix party that you have to actually have multiple Netflix accounts. That's Basically what, what Netflix party does is if I have a Netflix account and you have a Netflix account, it lets us sync up so we can watch the movie at the same time. I don't think it's something that you can share widely. Netflix is weird. Netflix is trying to crack down on account sharing. I would not recommend trying to base your movie nights on something like Netflix. If you have something through your library that offers streaming like Hoopla, where yeah. people can check out the movie on streaming, you can maybe do something like that, especially if you don't have hard copies of a movie. You could say, hey, use this kit while streaming on Hoopla. But I would not use anything where you have to purchase some sort of private mm -hmm. account like a Netflix or a Disney Plus. You're going to run into so many issues. Um, I would not really try that. And you definitely don't want to stream a movie over something like Google or something like that because you might get in trouble for copyright That's infringement. Right. Yeah. So, Another yeah. Another service to consider in addition to Hoopla, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, is Canopy. Yes. Uh, Canopy is another great place to go for movies. The only thing is that... Um, they, it might be hard to find a script. So if you have the time and you have the help, you could create your own script. I, a lot of those movies, at least in the past when I've checked, I couldn't find, I could, I researched and could not find scripts that were, had already been done for a lot of those children's movies. So um, it is an option if, you know, if it's a service that your library already has, because your patrons get it for free if they have your library card. But yeah. scripts. <laughs> Yeah, another way to, um, somebody was mentioning we only have one copy. Uh, we borrow from the, the local places and that's why we have so many. We don't have tons in-house. 
but uh, I've seen other people on Facebook and everything mentioning they have a kit and a movie and they wait for that movie to be returned and that kit goes out again. So maybe you have 10 movies that are available and they just kind of rotate around and then you only get a chance to check that out again when it's returned. So the kit isn't what's limited is the dvd so like i can make 10 kits and have them in the back room and as soon as princess bag is returned again i can offer it again so you can do it with only one but you'd probably want to have more options available that you just keep rotating through and waiting for somebody else to do i noticed a, a question about a um, general script we've considered that for like scooby-doo we were like let's just have a generic scooby-doo uh, um, script that you could watch with any scooby-doo there's like some things that are repeated, but they're not always repeated. So yeah, Velma loses their glasses almost every time, but not every time. So it doesn't work for everyone. And Scooby says, yikes, or, or maybe that's shaggy, but not rut row, um, but not every time. And, and it doesn't always work. So like a general generic thing doesn't always work. We were trying to come up with something because there's so many Scooby-Doo's, right? Like, just check out a Scooby-Doo video. But no, um, like, it doesn't always work, you know? And they change their outfits. So, like, it doesn't, like, it It needs to be very specific or it's not interesting. Because, like, if I just cover my eye every time, it, like, the horror guy comes out, like, I could do that anyways because that's what I normally do. It needs to be much more specific to the movie. That's what makes it fun and interesting. And, and there's the jokes in there and the fun part. Um, like one of the best parts in Zootopia is when uh, the, they pretended, the, the rabbit pretended to die at the beginning and it's blood, blood, blood. And uh, we threw out uh, red streamers in our kit. And um, it's a, a running joke in my family. We use that blood, blood, blood line all the time every time my kid gets hurt and it turns out that ever since that kit went out a lot of the families in the neighborhood start doing that now um and it's just fun and it's it's much more specific if there's something something I do add, oh, sorry i wasn't just gonna say i do want to add really quickly because we are getting close to time but one other thing although you can um stick together something that's more generic that doesn't fix the matter of um, timing as far as we've generally found that you don't want too many actions clustered too close together or too far apart. The sweet spot tends to be around every seven to 10 minutes or so um, because you don't want it to be so far apart that they forget they're watching an interactive movie and then don't react to the next thing. But if you have it all together, they're generally gonna get overwhelmed. So although you can, as I said, do something more generic, I think like Harry Potter, for instance, okay, every time, you know, X character casts a spell or something that's generic enough that it would work for all the movies. Um, that wouldn't necessarily help you with having things spaced out correctly. Does anyone have anything else that we want to add before we unfortunately have to stop? I'm gonna say in the chat, somebody had an ingenious idea of having bingo cards. So when somebody says jinkies, then you, you cover your square and that would totally work for Scooby-Doo. Yes. No, I love that idea. And I know that I have seen somewhere um, some bingo cards for different movies. We um, do a lot of bingo in ours. Again, when we send out um, <clears throat> kits versus in-house, we tend to include a lot of things like crafts and activities and printables and dot to dots and mazes because they're things you can do passively while you're watching the movie in between more interactive stuff. And because you're doing it at home, the lights aren't off. There's not a bunch of people um, so we do include a lot of things like bingo cards, scavenger hunts, um, dot to dot, things like that for the at-home movies. Anything that we have personally created for those, we have actually included in our scripts on that master list. I've put copies of all of our printables in those um, documents and then links to anything that we have borrowed from elsewhere or found elsewhere. Yeah, please, um, Sarah, you posted this uh, to contact us if you have more questions as we're wrapping up. All of our emails are right here. Please, please, please email us. And I just, us. To, I just want to remind everyone that if you have other people at your library who weren't able to make it, I got some emails uh, before the webinar um, from people who weren't able to make it. Uh, this webinar is recorded, so I will be um, taking the recording and uploading it either um, you know, to YouTube or to Vimeo. So that will be available um, and I will email that to everybody. And I'll also make sure that the two videos uh, from my the two slides, the drive-in movie and the movie theater, that those clips are included so that you can kind of see those 
events in action and kind of see how they play out a little bit. Um, Caitlin, do they get, um, someone asked, do we get the sheets? I assume they mean maybe the slides. Oh, the slides. I can definitely do that. I, yeah, I actually thought of that too, that the slides might be helpful there. I know there's a lot of pictures and content on here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll probably save the presentation as a, maybe a PDF. Um, I'll, I'll work something out and I'll include that in the email. Oh, no worries. <laughs> we, we figured out what you meant GV library. Um, so thank you guys all so, so much for coming. We really appreciate it. We love talking about this and we, if you have any questions, as we've said a couple of times, please feel free to reach out to us. You are not bothering us. Um, once again, there are reasons we became librarians and it's because we like to help other people and we enjoy running this sort of programming. Best of luck in your future endeavors and hope you guys have a great rest of your afternoon.